Hey guys, Guild here. Today, we're going to start on a video that I've been wanting to do for some time. This is From Scratch to Skyrim. In this video, I'm going to show you how to implement a model you've either found on a site like Sketchfab or CG Trader, or even made yourself. Keep in mind, if you use an artist's model from a public site such as Sketchfab, you must follow the terms of service and practices when it comes to giving credit for their work. Make sure to follow the rules of the license and attribute authors properly. With that being said, we're going to get right into it. Make sure you have all the proper tools and plugins that you'll need via the links in the description. Once you've found an object you'd like to work on, download it in a Blender recommended format. In this case, either FBX or GLB. Head over to Blender, click File, then Import, and browse to the base model. In this instance, it's in my downloads under the Vampire Slayer Greatsword.glb. After importing the model, select it, and then head to the Material and Textures tab. Remove the textures from the model. NIF Export needs the textures to not be bound to the model. After that, make sure to set the game and the scene options to Skyrim SE. After that, you'll want to set up your folder structures. Create a new folder and name it what you'd like for your mod. Inside this folder, you'll need to create a Meshes and Textures folder. In each of those folders, you'll need to create one more that serves as the path for your textures and meshes. In my case, it's called Guildy Creations, but you can choose your own name. Make sure that the name you choose is identifiable to you and doesn't conflict with other people's mods. Head back into Blender and select the Texture Paint tab. From here, you can see the different textures that came with the model. Select the Side Drop tab here to access the DDS Texture plugin. Export all your textures and point them to the folder you made earlier. In some cases, you'll get an error about no images having DXGI format. In this case, you can click Edit, Preferences, search the DDS plugin, and toggle Custom Properties on and back off before saving the plugin. After doing this, the textures should export in the proper DDS format. You can see here that all the textures exported properly, so we can name them something unique for the weapon, so they don't conflict and overwrite other textures and cause issues. For texture, the color is often referred to as albedo or diffuse. The pink texture is often roughness, which we don't need since Skyrim doesn't use them. The blue one is often called a normal map or the UV layer. You can give these unique identifying names, such as an underscore with a D to denote diffuse and an underscore N to show it's a normal map. Heading back into Blender, we're going to make sure no textures are bound to the model and the scene is set to Skyrim SE. From here, we're going to export the model as a NIF, the native format for models in Skyrim. Make sure you export the NIF to your mesh folder as you could be liable to lose the model. Make sure to name it something unique and identifiable so that it won't conflict with any other models. At this point, you can close out of Blender as it's time to open two copies of NIFScope. Now that we exported the model as a base NIF, we need to substitute it into a proper Skyrim NIF containing the data it needs to work properly. Browse to your exported model and a stock NIF for the item, which I have provided a few of in the description. NIFs can contain a variety of things. In this case, though, we're going to clear out the extra meshes with Control Delete, such as the scabbard and the extra sword parts. Since our model was only one mesh, we only need one tri shape to drop it into. Go over to the sword we exported, expand the tri shape until you see the nigh tri shape data, select it, and press Control Alt C. Go to the stock NIF, select the nigh tri shape data there, and press Control Alt V. This copies the mesh from our exported model into our stock NIF. Make sure to save as and point it to your original exported sword and your newly made folder so that you don't accidentally save over your stock NIFs. Now that you've copied the mesh over to a proper NIF, we're going to close out of both instances of NIFScope. At this point, you should double check your textures are named properly and your folder structure is set up right. Then you'll want to compress the folder into a zip in order to load it into MO2 or your preferred mod manager like Vortex. Install the mod into your mod manager and make sure it's enabled so that the textures show up in the next step. Next up, you'll load Outfit Studio and head into the program. Here we're going to modify the textures, the size, and location of the weapon to make sure it looks proper and that your character holds it. Navigate to your weapon NIF and load it up. First thing we're going to do is scale it down in size so that we can see the whole sword on our screen. 
After we've scaled it down a bit and have it at least on screen, let's double click the mesh and head into the textures section. Here we can clear out the other textures from the stock NIF and point them to our new ones. Make sure you use the folder and texture names from before. In my case it's textures slash guildy creations and whatever you name the sword. Remember to point the diffuse and normal texture paths to the correct ones and then hit OK. You should see your model fully textured. Next up you'll want to click file and load reference. Point it at a stock NIF or a correctly placed weapon for size and direction. In my case, I have some weapon NIFs from base Skyrim, such as the Iron Greatsword. Select a default NIF, then choose the shape to import after. Click OK. Now you should have a properly sized and located reference weapon for you to match yours to. Keep in mind, each weapon type can be placed and rotated differently, so it's important to accumulate stock NIFs for each type of weapon that you'd like to work on. From here on, you're going to rotate, scale, and move the weapon to match the reference one. The F key brings up a tool to rotate and move the item a tad bit easier, but it can occasionally cause a crash, so be careful using it. Pay attention to the node in the center of the screen when you hold right-click. For most weapons, this is where the character holds on to it. Each weapon is slightly different, so testing and moving after may be required. Once you have the weapon in a suitable size and spot, you can delete the reference, then export the NIF and save it. Now that we're done with Outfit Studio, you can close out of it. After that, boot up the Creation Kit so that we can make the ESP. Once the Creation Kit is loaded, you're going to select the base Skyrim ESM and load it up. Search for an already made weapon, in this case an ebony greatsword. Depending on what you're making, there's a variety of things that you need to make it work properly. For weapons, you need a first person record and a weapon record. Including a crafting recipe is an easy way to get the weapon without having to mess with the leveled lists. Duplicate each of these records and then click show only active forms, hiding all the other records. Double click the record to open it up. Rename the ID of it to something unique for each form and weapon. In my case, I'm calling it Guild Vamp Slayer Two Handed. In the Model section, navigate to the NIF you had previously worked on. It will be located in your base game data folder under Meshes and your uniquely named folder. Continue on to the weapon record and make sure you give it a unique ID. The Name section is the in game name. After changing those, head down to the Art and Sound section and point it at the weapon NIF you made earlier. Under the First Person Model object, navigate to the First Person record that you just made. In the Weapon record, you can change a variety of things like the damage and speed of the weapon, as well as animations, sounds, and keywords. For the purpose of this video, we won't get into those, however. If you wanted your weapon to be craftable, here is where you would change the crafting recipe, any perks required, and the point the created object at the weapon record that you just made. Once you're done editing records, click the Save button and give your ESP a unique name. For the purpose of this video, I'm just calling it Guild Teaches to Mod. Once you've saved your ESP, you can close out of the creation kit entirely. From here, you can go into your overwrite folder or wherever you saved your mod ESP and copy it over to the base folder of your sword mod. You can delete the old one once that's copied over. After you have the ESP copied over, you can compress the folder again, delete the first iteration if you still have it there, and fix the name of it if needed. Then you can reinstall the mod, or install it again as a new one if you change the name. Make sure to turn the ESP on, and change it in your load order so that it's in a proper spot. Once you make sure your mod is turned on, boot up Skyrim and load your game.
After you've loaded in game, you can use a mod like Add Item Menu to easily search for your ESP and see if the weapon was added properly. Alternatively, if you made a crafting recipe, you can go to a forge and check there. From here on, you can equip and use the weapon and see if you sized and located it properly. If you need to work on it a bit more, you may need to close out of Skyrim, open Outfit Studio again, tweak it a bit, export the NIF, and then reinstall the mod to see if you got it right that time. So now that we've covered how to put a model in the game as a weapon, just try to remember a few things. 1. Credit artists when you use their work and follow their licenses for usage. 2. Unique names for textures, models, and records so you don't have conflicts with other mods. And number 3. Have fun. There's a lot to learn in Skyrim modding and this is just the tip of the iceberg. You can check out some of my other videos for information on how to ESL files or install mods with MO2 in general. As always, thanks for watching. Feel free to leave a comment if you have any questions or suggestions.